I feel like a lot of people think that I'm not going to be ready for this. Should be top two, top three. Winning's the goal. So CrossFit drug tested me. Oh, I was like crying for like 15 minutes. It was terrible. But I think going into Torian, my only expectation is that I complete the workouts to the best of my ability. If I do that, I know that I'm gonna place, should be top two, top three, would be like the worst. Winning's the goal. So we're testing the final for Torian. So it's 22 cow echo, 15 rings, and then a lunge. I want to say 48 foot, but I feel like it's longer than that. However long it is, with uh, it's supposed to be 32 and a half, but we only have 35, so I'm testing with 35 today. Hey Siri, what is 12 feet in meters? 12. 3.6. How do I even do that? Oh, that makes me feel a little bit better. So CrossFit drug tested me um, before they emailed me about the payout prize for the Open, which I thought was pretty dog, but fair enough. I mean, it makes sense. They wouldn't want to give money to someone who's like cheating, but still like, the lady who like drug tested me was like, um, she does like other sports as well, but they were like, sometimes they drug test you and then they like drug test you a week later to like throw you off. Apparently like if you are taking, like you know, if you know what's coming within 24 hours, maybe you could do something. But then it's like, if something happens again, it's like to try and catch you out. And I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, I know. I was like, I got the email like yesterday. So I was like, must have passed. So I think that's good news. <laughs> so 2020 July, um, my friend, Bree Johnson, she was like, come like try this, this class. It's called like CrossFit or something. She's like, I know how, how you love like being competitive and training and I think you'll really like enjoy it. So I went down and I tried it. I tried it and I just started doing it every day. I would do, the same class every day, twice a day, like if that makes sense. So I'd do the class in the morning and then I'd come back and do the same class at night. <laughs> and then, yeah, someone told me like, maybe don't do that, it's probably too much. And at the time I didn't even think of that. There was a couple of girls in the class that were kind of, I don't know if they were just being nice, but they were like, like you're picking up the movements really quick, like you're doing really well. So I just stuck at it, yeah. <laughs> oh. I know, I don't know if it's that one or that one, because there's a line there, but there's also a line here. I think here, look. I'm just gonna do, I'll count. Is it 21 or 22? Oh, here, are you using these? There you go. Jesus, it's not even how to put it in the <laughs> Alright, so Jack Monaghan, qualified, yeah, for Torian Pro 2024. Yeah, first first time ever for a, like a big individual comp. Only did uh, down under teams last year with Costa and a few boys, but first huge uh, individual comp, which is pretty exciting. Well, I was, I was sitting 41st uh, at, at the close of the official dates, and then um, it was like a pretty stressful like seven to ten days, and then I think it was Saturday, like two weeks ago, I got an email saying, hey, like, you're in, uh, invitation was sent, and then from then it's, yeah, back to training and, yeah, cracking in. About two years ago, I went and watched Torian uh, and um, actually competed in the community event outside, just in, like, when they back had, when they had pairs. And I was kind of sitting there like, wow, like, this is really what I want to do, and I want to be there. Like, I, it was so, I was so hungry. I was sort of doubting myself. I was like, I don't know if this is possible, because I've literally only just started doing CrossFit like just before then, like maybe two or three, two and a half, three years ago. And I thought to myself, geez, that's going to be hard to get there. But to see yourself there two years down from putting like endless hours in is, is pretty awesome. Yeah, it's huge. I was wrong. Need grips. We've got, it's literally just a frog grips, belt, grips, socks, I don't know why socks, 
And then I'm contemplating wearing knee sleeves because I feel like on the bike I might lose a little bit of circulation, but then I'm like, how bad do I want to bang my knees on the lunges? So I guess we'll see. Uh, so we went to Wollongong for a week just after the uh, quarterfinals. It was good. Um, kind of just like going over there just to like sharpen up a little bit. I feel like whenever you get out of like your home routine and train with other people, you always like catch yourself out on like things that you can be complacent with, like just being comfortable at home. So it was good to shake it up a little bit. What was that? Like three weeks out from Torian and then come home and be like, oh, I could probably be a bit better with this or that. And then we had like two weeks now here and then yeah, we leave on Monday. So just to sharpen up a little bit. He's bored. Everyone's doing workouts. I feel like I'm lucky that I don't sweat so much because like Zane has to take his sweatbands home like every day after training. And I'm like, I can go, I can go a week. Like they're pretty sweaty, but they just smell like CCs. <laughs> I mean, I still, I think making it even harder would go on the short rings because they're like not even a metre long, but, <laughs> and they'll be like extremely muscly, but I feel like for me, the turnover is not my problem, it's the dip, so doing the long rings is kind of closer and better for the stimulus satorian. So I feel like when I'm not doing anything, no matter what it is, it has to be like fitness wise, I feel like I just lose the sense of like purpose. So I feel like if you look back at any time in my life, like the happiest I've been is when I'm like training for something physically. So when I was like super young, it was always like gymnastics or like netball and athletics. And then high school was like swimming and now it's CrossFit. So I started mid 2020 and just before 2021 started, I decided that I wanted to commit like a full year of training and just see what happened. Like I was only 20, oh my God, 21 at the time. So even if I committed a full year to training and I got nothing out of it, I'd still end up fitter and happier than going to uni or working full time. So it was a win-win for me. There was a few moments, they weren't really like big moments, but it was kind of like a moment where I thought to myself like, if this is what I'm doing now, what could I be doing in like three or four years? So I think we had an in-house weightlifting comp. I think it was maybe the five or six months in. Um, and I PR'd my snatch by like 10 kilos. So I hit like 65 and I clean and jerked like 90. And I was just like, wow, if I can do this now with five months of training, six months of training, like how amazing can I be if I stick to it? Oh, I don't want to go up this hill, you know. The gym's got a little hill. Just to, just to make things even harder, you know, throw you out a little bit. This dumbbell pile, it's actually pretty good right now, but this is where all the heavy dumbbells are. And when they're like piled up everywhere, it's like asking for your fingers to like come off. It's pretty scary. <laughs> Might need a belt. What? I don't care. Uh, I'm in judge you. Well, we've got eight minutes. Oh, if you want, yeah. Can you judge your rings? I'll judge your One of you can start my bike. I'm going to no rest. Yes, I will. I will never no rep, Grace. She doesn't. She moves clean. Zane no reps like 90% of my war walls. They got nothing else to do. <laughs> Billy! You want to judge me, Bill? Yeah? I just want him to be included in everything. I wish he was a little human. 
Bill, watch out. Yay. Yeah, uh, I like training at Dignan. Costa still tries to push me here and there, but he's a little bit old now, so it's hard. If it's like a workout that's like rowing and handstand push-ups, he might get me. I reckon he could have qualified for Torian this year if he'd submitted his scores. Um, however, the wall ball and burpees, I versed him in that. And I think that I just broke him and he stopped. And he was actually going really well. So I think if, he, if I wasn't versing him and he finished the workout as he was doing it, he probably would have qualified. And then, and then he just didn't enter any of his scores. So that's what happens, you know? Just can't keep up with the big dogs anymore. <laughs> Can you rub some cream on my shoulder? Some cream on my shoulder. Huh? I can't. No, I choose how much we put on. Last time you made me cry. What the heck? Oh. I don't know. I don't trust you with deep heat. <laughs> I remember what happened last time. Yeah. To, me? to you? Remember when it happened to me with the extreme hot one? You made me cry. Remember when I went into oh, in yeah. my back? No, this isn't the hot one. This one's not the hot oh, one. What to me? Oh, no, 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 no. Just oh, that was too much. No, oh, not. No. Fall back. Fall back. Just put it there. What would have happened is one. she would have been sweating. Her paws would have been open. Boom, goes in there. No, that's your side. That's my side. I was um, had a sore. My back was really sore. I was like, cool, I'll put a little bit of deep heat on before I work out. I can't even remember what it was. Anyway, there's like this super strength deep heat and he puts it on and he like, you know when you excessively rub it and it gets like overly hot and it burns? He like burnt my skin and I was like, it was on fire. I had to go and like have a shower. I was like crying for like 15 minutes. It was terrible. All right, so I'll give you a tip with deep heat, right? Don't do what I do. Put it on during your workout, thinking it's gonna help. Especially around here. Your pores are open. That shit seeps in, and then you're burning like fuck. And then it doesn't go. It just gets worse and worse. Make sure you put it on before you start. You should be all right, man. Awesome. Pro tips. Oh, I think a massive role model and someone that's really helped me stay healthy and not do stupid shit um, is George. So George Winston, um, Coach George, he's basically taught me how to weight lift. Um, and he taught me to prioritize technique over weight. And I think that's one thing that actually really helped later on down the path. The reason I only PR, I jumped 10 kilos to PR was because I'd never touched anything heavier before that. Um, I had really good mobility and like moved really well, but I just wasn't allowed to go up in weight until my technique was better, so. And then another person that taught me to train hard, probably a little bit too hard, um, was Dean Linda Layton. So he was actually my first like CrossFit coach. Um, just for me, he just taught me to mentally push through things. This was before I met Costa. So we would do like crazy sessions. I was definitely overtraining, like way, way overtraining. Um, but just the mental side of pushing, doing like impossible imams and things like that. He was taught me mentality is everything. Um, and then the next role model would probably be Costa and Zane. All right, boys. <laughs> Last couple you can coast in. Hold that until three cows. Hold that until three cows. Come on. Stay on that bike. Stay on that bike. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Yep. Good. Go. Three. It's all hips here. Four to go. Hips. Twelve. Yeah, good. Stay over the rings. 13, yeah, good. 12 for increments. Come on. Good, pass the second. Gotta get past it. No rep, back. That's okay, you're right, you're right, you're right, you got it. Let's go, Bob. Thank you. 
Come on, full grip on that. You got it, girl. Come on. Come on. Eight steps to go. We're nearly there. If you need a rest here, it's okay. You want it? Come on, four steps. Come on. Hold it with everything you have. Hold it with everything you have. I know, I know, I know. You need, Grace, no one is going to help you on the floor. No one is going to help you on the floor. Billy, get away. Babe, no one is going to help you on the floor. I know, come on. Billy, get away. Come on, bub. Two more. No, it's, it's shit, but it's fine. It's okay, it's fine. Nah, he, he, did, he did what he had to do. No, After you said I didn't say it again, but I have to say it. Okay, yeah. There's no point redoing that again. I feel like if your rings feel good. Yeah, but just... Like you don't tell me paces and stuff like I didn't tell you any paces. You, you told me twice. You said today above 70. Grace, you were saying above 70 anyway. Yeah. No, okay. Alright, alright, okay. I'm not saying anything. I'm through my training. Alright, hold on. Please don't judge me next time then. No, I will judge you. That's bullshit. I did nothing wrong with you. You were holding that pace either way. You're at 69, 70, the whole thing. Yes, you were, Grace. You were at 75 at the start. No, I wasn't. Yes, I never got 75. Grace, you did. I was not telling you three. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not, that's not me. They're 35 kilo dumbbells. Your grip just went. It's what happens sometimes with your left hand. What time was it? Huh? 5.35. So you're a minute 20 slower than what we fucking tested two weeks ago. So you can't even compare it. It is what it is. It was just a mistake. You'd rather fail now and understand what it feels like than fail in fucking in the competition. Do you know what I mean? That's why I reckon you've got to redo that. And actually do one more time, but you actually, I'll get the 32 tomorrow. I promise you I'll bring them in. Alright, because Harris just, huh? What, what's that? I'll message Harris. No. Nah, we'll do no, it again. I don't need to do it again, I just need to do more. You don't need to do, do, no, you don't, you just need to do this. Just one more time. It's not hard. It doesn't zap you. It's a, it's a confidence thing, right? Just fucking do it again. So Zane was judging me, and I was PMSing and then something that he did triggered me and then yeah you know repped me which is fine I knew like obviously I knew it was a no rep I think just the way that he did it today kind of like I don't know I was already pissed off with myself and then I think I just took down on him a little bit why were you pissed off with yourself <sighs> my grip was just failing and I was just upset I also forgot that it was heavier so I was like also stressing a little bit more with my brain but it's fine. I'd rather do it heavier and that happen than go lighter and then that happened to me on the day. So. You'd rather, you'd rather get it out now. Get it, get it done now, yeah. <laughs> I think this year I've kind of like, I still have the goal of making the games, but I feel like I've shifted my thought process and like how I think of things. Like I know that I train a lot better than I compete, so trying to take that mentality and try and switch it over. So like in training, obviously, make it a bit more like competition and then in competition, make it feel a bit more like training. That was actually very rare. Like usually I'll get upset with things, but I just keep it in. I think just the time of the month and like, I don't know, I just let it out today. So um, yeah, like, it's not like it's never happened before. I mean, I've lost my shit at Zane a lot, but yeah, I think that's the first time I was ever caught on camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it literally is reality. And like, I feel like if you don't have moments like this, like you don't get to experience like the good stuff. It's really shit, yeah. Yeah, but that's just training. 
Um, and sometimes that's just competition, like it's happened to me in comp before. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I think last year going into it, I wasn't really expecting to qualify. So I was kind of just like, meh. Like I wanted to be, I knew I wanted to be top 10, but I didn't really know where. Whereas this year I feel like there's no thing that can really like fail me. Like that's probably the worst thing that, that's happened to me. <laughs> so we've been working on like paces for certain things and not, not pushing things just because of like the adrenaline. Like I know that some people who have been doing it for ages, like Ricky and things like that, they can use the adrenaline to send things because they know they're going to do really well in it. Whereas I feel like I'm not quite there yet. So just executing the best I can. Yeah, he just says what he thinks, which is fine. It's good. You know, it's sometimes <sighs> you got to just say it how it is and people, people's feelings get hurt, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I'm used to it. I got siblings, you know, your siblings are honest with you. Like I used to, <laughs> I used to get called fatty when I was like younger, but I'm, I'm, I'm used to anything. I'm yeah, thunder thighs. That was the one in primary school that, that one hit me hard when I was in like year, year four. I don't even know. I was like 10. <laughs> Growing up, I was in a family of eight. So obviously my parents and my, there was six siblings or six of us, five other siblings. So we had three boys and three girls. So things were very competitive, physical, um, very physical family. Yeah, a lot of anger. <laughs> so my younger sister stabbed my other younger sister in the head with a syringe when we were like, I don't know, maybe I was 10 or 11. They would have been like eight and nine. Um, my younger brother stabbed my other brother in the leg with pliers. Just, I don't know. You have been stabbed though. I haven't been stabbed, no. I, yeah. Um, I've been chased with a knife. You know, I feel like maybe it's not normal, but that was normal for me growing up. So yeah, I don't know. I feel like that's where a little bit of my competitiveness comes from. Just the will to live. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> survival. <laughs> um, but growing up, I was very grateful because my mum let me do any sport that I wanted. So primary school, um, after school, I know that a lot of other families, were, they were allowed to do like one or two sports, but my mum let me do everything. So I did so many team sports. I did dancing, singing lessons, um, piano, drums, all of that. Um, that faded away as I got older, but I feel like that built such a good foundation just as a child. And I was really grateful for that. And then on the p competitive side again, my dad used to bribe me. So what year one, we had like cross country um, and like athletics and stuff. My dad would be like, I'll give you $50 if you win. And back then $50 for like someone who's in year one. I was like, yeah. So I would just like, it's weird. I used to like stand at the, the start line and I just like, I don't know if everyone has it, but I just knew that I'd beat everyone. I was like, I knew I could beat them. I don't know. I feel like that hope is really cool. Cause it's like, it's like maybe I'm just want to try harder than everyone. Maybe, yeah. And I just, I was like, I know I can beat you. Like, and I would just beat them. It was really cool. <laughs> and then I remember there's one point year four, we used to have, um, be in the school and then year four you get to go to the one where you verse other schools and I remember driving to school my brother was like you cannot win this like there's so many other people there's other schools and I was like all right we'll see and then I won that and I was like <laughs> all these all these other sports that I did was that it was basically just building me for CrossFit you know yeah I thought all of this stuff was kind of normal and now that I think about it it's probably not that normal but good foundation <laughs> <laughs> um, my first initial thought was like really three years in a row, <laughs> like maybe put some some normal rope climbs in, like I haven't even done them yet. I feel like a lot of people think that I'm not going to be ready for this, but um, in reality I was actually ready for legless last year, I just wasn't ready for seated legless and descent, that descent really just took it out of me, like the eccentric. So I think this year people are going to see like how much effort I've actually 
put into them. Um, I've tested it twice and I've finished with really good times. So um, speaking to my coach two days ago, I was actually telling him that this is the workout that I'm most excited for, which is pretty cool. Legless rope climbs are my slowest improving movement. So I think Torian, yeah, 2022, they came up and it was 10 legless rope climbs in between each one. You had to do like a shuttle run. And <laughs> I just died. Like I went out too hot and yeah, I just failed. And then the year after, they put seated legless with legless descent. And I'd been training for legless, so I was ready for legless rope climbs. Um, but the descent just like killed me. Um, so I ended up failing that workout too, which pretty much cost me a game spot last year. That dropped me to that, and then I failed one other thing. Um, dropped me to six, so it was a little bit disappointing. But this year, yeah, I dropped the sandbag on the last event. Uh, that's gonna hurt. <laughs> <laughs> that will forever be in my brain. Um, yeah, I'm actually really, really excited for this year. I was speaking to my coach and I have a plan and I'm going to do exactly that plan. Nothing slower, nothing faster. Yeah. Who do I want to make proud? I feel like the people around me are going to be proud no matter how I do. Like, they're going to know that I gave my best effort, but making myself proud and executing the things that I've really wanting to be executed well will make me proud. Um, my name is Grace Walton uh, and I've been training at uh, Chasing Better Port Kennedy for just over a year. I think for me I've become a little bit addicted to competition. 